Hello, Ryan, and thank you very much for coming here to my presentation. And uh, I'd like to start off by introducing myself. Uh, you see, my name is Tia Jun Chen, but you can call me Tia Jun. Tia Jun. Um, I'm from VMware China, IND, ATC, Advanced Technology Center. So in our team, uh, recently, I'm working on IoT, Internet of Things, and edge computing, the any exploration related to IoT. Uh, Actually, I have, besides them, I have some personal research, like today's presentation, Unikernel. And uh, another thing is that uh, real-time virtualization, um, because I think that's a good area in the future. Um, before I joined VMware, uh, I also worked at several companies. Um, you, you might hear some name, like Venerable System, where I was responsible for Venerable Link's kernel and BSP development, and Venerable the hypervisor, and Venerable the parallelized guest OS. Open Source Technology Center. Uh, basically, our team was trying to enable some hardware features to the Open Source Technology community, like KVM and Zen and QMU. Okay, this is something about myself. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, one of my unique exploration. Uh, uh, unique links. Uh, I'd like to explore if we can unique and links uh, convert links to unique kernel. I guess this should be the uh, your guys' interest. So each time I have to make this sort of statement um, because, as I mentioned, it's just my personal exploration. So it's not a commitment or roadmap from VMware. Uh, for our limited uh, time, um, today are just a few items. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, give, uh, introduce, um, introduce some of that uh, unicorn background. And then um, we, uh, let's uh, reveal that uh, concept of my unicorn proposal. And, uh, Second part, I'd like to talk about something related to the union kernel links. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how many guys have heard of union kernel. I guess no one. <laughs> really? Okay, that's great. So just take a look at this picture. I think this can help you understand. Uh, uh, sorry. I think this. Uh, <coughs> This picture on the bottom side can help you understand that inside what's happening from VM to Unikernel. VM, virtual machine, in the virtual uh, virtualization environment, um, virtual machines uh, were protected and isolated by hardware virtualization technology. But they are heavyweight because they are involved too much VM contact switch. So a couple of years ago, we had a concern like Docker. It's very convenient to love it. Uh, if you uh, know something like microservice and DevOps and secure, because uh, container basically it's uh, based on some existing Linux kernel feature like namespace and C group and capability. More importantly, um, uh, all containers just share one ho uh, common host OS. So if something is wrong with this host OS, they could have been packed to all containers. You remember uh, in 2015, I think, there was a famous bug that uh, dirty copy on write, that memory services bug, that really allowed the container to escape. So uh, some people started thinking, can we just trim down that host OS, and then we just deploy one or few v uh, containers inside. But this is still the traditional operating system that uh, execution model, uh, like there's division between kernel space and user space. So what about the unikernel? Unikernel, we um, built application into that uh, one given operating system where we just keep those necessary parts to make sure this service or this application to run. So this is like a library to this application, but uh, we built them as the whole image. Now there is no division between kernel space and user space. So uh, let, now let's look at how to define a unikernel. According to Wiki page, a uh, unikernel is specialized and single address machine image constructed by using library operating system. You just remember specialized, a single address space, and that lib OS. Uh, I'd like to categorize them to a different groups. Uh, the first one is that general purpose uh, unique kernels. Um, it likes, uh, it leverages that general kernel OS to uh, run that um, current application, but uh, using well established that uh, specification. Uh, either uh, for the Linux or for Unix, uh, I mean, like that uh, Podix compliant. Uh, in this uh, case, we have the another group that uh, language supports Unix, uh, language supports specific Unix kernel. Um, it acts as that library, but specific to one programming language. Uh, like that Mirage OS, 
on, it's written with that OCaml. Uh, actually, to be honest, I'm not familiar with this special language, but reportedly, um, it can work. It can work very well and efficiently in some cases, especially for that networking case. So, uh, think about that definition. I think that unikernel have uh, this that characteristic. Single address space. That means we can do that zero copy. We can allocate a huge page. That single running mode. That means we don't need, don't need uh, that uh, highway system call. Instead, we can use that function call. And there's something behind this that most time we just run one process, maybe with multi-thread. But this means we don't need that highway uh, context switch. Uh, like that uh, in the case of x86, we don't need to reload the CR3. So um, based on this characteristic, um, unikernel compared Sorry, does that mean that it's immune to Spectre as well, or is it meltdown? Sorry? Does it mean that it's immune to the inter the, the <coughs> TLB leakage? It really stress without mean that you need that heavy TLB flash, right? Because we just run one process. So. Yeah, but is it is it immune to the, the recent cache-related bugs, the Intel Spectre? Oh, okay. <laughs> Good point. I think this can. I think that you can approve on the one side that unikernel is very good because we just run one process. Yeah. We don't need, need that KTPI that patch because we don't have that uh, division between kernel space or your space when you do that patch. Uh, okay, so uh, comparing that uh, VM and compare, even compare the container, I think unikernel still can provide us uh, that benefits. The first one is that it improves the security. Secu because uh, essentially, uh, Unikernel is still the VM, but a light VM. And they are protected by the hardware virtualization technology and components. Uh, that means the attack service is reduced too much. And, and again, we just run one. So, meantime, we can get that smaller, uh, small footprint and fast boot, and we also can highly optimize. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we can use that live TCP IP, uh, that uh, IO stack, and we also can <coughs> parallelize them. That means we can get that uh, very good IO performance. So actually, there are a lot of existing unikernels. At least some name here, like OSV or Include OS. Anyway, that's a drop bridge is a Microsoft. And Unique actually is not that uh, unikernel. It's that tool. It helps you compile application to some existing unikernel. Just three, suppose three exist in Unikernel. Uh, Unicraft, at least that uh, separated because this was just launched last year. Um, because uh, this thing, that uh, fundamental drawback to Unikernel is uh, you need that additional effort to build the application to the Unikernel. So they are trying to provide that uh, library pool. Some library is to that uh, uh, architecture, some uh, library is to that uh, platform or to that field system. And then they provide that uh, build system to help you build that uh, unikernel image from that library you select. Uh, some unikernel solutions. Um, I have to men uh, mention Docker. So in 2015, um, Docker that acquired that unikernel system. So after that, uh, it had brought out that considerable attention to unikernel. And uh, it also had released uh, uh, two projects, Hypercade and VPNCade. Uh, basically, it's trying to um, bring that uh, native uh, Docker experience to that Mac OS and Windows OS. Uh, Michelangelo is that uh, HPC framework, uh, high performance uh, H, um, performance framework. So it uh, has that uh, hypervisor from that optimized from the KVM, but in the guest OS, they uh, use that OS V, one existing app, uh, unikernel. Uh, OSV, uh, because as I mentioned, uh, unikernel has a good uh, IO throughput uh, I/O performance and uh, it's very small. So some people use that unikernel construct that uh, NFV instance uh, like that uh, router or firewall, and uh, they just uh, short lived because they just run on demand. That means it's hard to detect because you don't uh, use that, you don't have enough time to get that inside the service. So um, based on some uh, investigation and uh, some discussion, uh, as we think that Unikernel really can yield that uh, good performance. But uh, um, mm, uh, as I said, uh, there are a lot of existing Unikernels, but it's hard to see them in the production environment. So I think um, they are facing some challenges. Like uh, 
like a compelling user case. You kernel is not such a thing. I mean, one size fits all. So we need to figure out what's that potential, but valuable user case to Unikernel. Another challenge is the compatibility. Unikernel is not very different than the traditional existing legacy application directly. And uh, how to monitor, debug, log that? Because Unikernel just support one process most of the time. So that means if you want to use the existing tools or utility, we cannot run it. Uh, another thing uh, is that um, there are a variety of Unikernels. I think we will miss that standard to make sure Unikernel su to succeed. So uh, last year, I started thinking, could, uh, we know Unix is pretty very well uh, broadly. Could we connect links to Unikernel? So I have such a proposal. I want to that convert links uh, to Unikernel because I think links can help us address some challenges. Links has that many, many user cases. Links support that different libraries uh, and support that different uh, that's L stacks. And uh, it has some different tools and utilities. We can reuse them. At the same time, I think links uh, is sort of still in the developer cycle. So any that optimization or the, any that um, acceleration still can benefit Unikernel. So now let's uh, look at uh, uh, what could we do. So basically, uh, our target, our goal is to uh, explore what's the best platform for running Unikernel case. Actually, I have that architecture, I call it uh, Universal. Uh, it's composed of four that are primary components. The first, first one is uh, Unix. So uh, I try to modify this kernel to exploit that uh, Unikernel characteristic to get that better performance. The next part is uh, Unicombo. Um, I still want to integrate some existing Unikernel because different user, uh, custom user cases motivate different that requirement. Another part is that Uni uh, bridge kit. Um, basically, is designed to that uh, automated uh, build system to help us build that application to a uh, Unix image. The last part is that Unix manager. This is a sort of the controller of all that uh, uh, Unix uh, uh, VM and it's exposed to functionality um, through that REST API um, through which that um, every client can be interacted with that uh, Unix kernel VM. Today, I just focus on Unix. Um, so first thing, uh, Unikernel means we are running one mode, one uh, that space. So we should sh make sure that Unix is running with that one mode and one that single address space. That means uh, here just focus on the x86 64 bit. So that means uh, all both that user stuff and user, um, kernel stuff should be run at that room zero. So the, I have to modify. And the user CSDS and that uh, GDP entry table to make sure user stuff is running with that room zero. But uh, we have a problem. Think about this. Uh, user, st uh, user stuff is running with uh, its stack, user stack. But sometimes you know that user stack is not mapped, or we need to expand that user stack. So at the same time, it will trigger that uh, page fault. But at the same moment, uh, certain moment, uh, the stack is not valid, so CPU cannot save some information like that uh, CS uh, at EIP. So it will trigger another fault, um, that double fault. But again, stack is not still not valid. So that causes CPU panic. How can we handle this situation? So unfortunately, unfortunately we have that ST, uh, interrupt stick table on this mechanism. That means TSS, task state uh, that segment, has that field with that point to that, that interrupt stack. That means that at this moment, uh, CPU can switch that your stack to some dedicated kernel stack. This problem can be uh, resolved. So uh, next thing about uh, <coughs> reflect VDSO. You know, VDSO has uh, been developed uh, to uh, offer that system call, but without the performance like a switch. But know that Unix means we are running one space, kernel space. We don't need that system call. So we just redirect uh, that uh, system call to the function call here. Uh, next thing is about uh, support a legacy switch stack. What does that mean? Some application, they probably be uh, compiled and built statically. 
So in this case, we have the switch stack. But fortunately, I think it's just a few cases. A single address space means that um, we just running with the kernel space. Um, we can so uh, in this case we don't provide the fork. So besides that uh, single um, um, single uh, stress space and a single mode, I have to uh, opt them to get the uh, small size on the performance. So first thing is that um, we can use the key config. Typically, we can disable those unnecessary that memory subsystem or that driver something like that to get that smaller um, memory. I want to separate and system call, now we should call the function call. On one hand, this can reduce that memory size. On the other hand, let's see, make sure we're safe. We don't need that unnecessary system call function call. Uh, they copy. Um, the copy, I think they should go because we are running kernel space. So such a uh, check or copy between kernel space to your space should go away. Like this, that get put a user or the copy from to user, we should make that. Uh, uh, schedule is an another problem. Uh, you know, talk about the native that many links uh, besides that uh, stop uh, add we have that uh, CFS, we have that RT, we have a deadline. But no, we just run one process, so we don't need these complicated uh, schedule classes. So I'm trying to that uh, decouple these schedule classes to make sure we can custom schedule according to different application requirement. But they also raise one question to me. Should we uh, redesign new that schedule to uh, run this case? I mean, the just one process. Uh, next thing is that uh, uh, TCIP stack. Uh, Linux uh, has that good uh, network stack because it's a general operating system. It can address different uh, user standards. But uh, now we just run one, pro uh, one process, maybe one service. So we don't need this uh, complex that uh, uh, TCP IP stack. Instead, we can introduce some leverage TCP IP stack, like that leverage IP and the fast socket, so something like that. Um, this is not uh, difficult because I think a lot of guys are already working to how to uh, integrate this um, leverage TCP stack to that link, which is sort of like the integration. Uh, another thing is that, um, you know, besides that, um, Standard links, actually we have a lot of that links variants. We have SE links, we have the JSQT links, we have parameter art links. So we still can make sure that, uh, that uh, Unilinx can provide this different profile. This can help us address different user scenarios, like parameter links. We can put this at IoT case. Uh, this depends on different that user code had a source code, we just um, recompile that standard library like glibc, where we replace that fun system call with function call. You just need to recompile your source code. Or if you have the binary, but if that compiled with that this flag, like that uh, uh, shared pick, so we can use that system call to function call. Uh, other cases, I, th I think they are not dominant, so I don't consider them. Uh, multi-process. Um, I think if we want to get the best performance um, for the unit kernel, you'd better that redesign your application to migrate from that multi-process model to that multi, multiple that thread model. But if you cannot, or if you do not want to do this, then I think there's uh, two approach to address this. The first the way is that straightforward. That means one fork trigger the one that Unix image. But that means that IPC is becoming that inter-VM communication, it's hybrid. But fortunately, we have that uh, VM function in the instruction, and this is from the Intel that VTX uh, feature. This can use that um, pre-constructed EPT table to build that fast and safe way to communicate between VM. Another approach is that PCID um, is that acronym of the process context uh, identifier. You can treat that uh, as that uh, process ID. That means that you can tag TLB. So that means TLB can hold the tra uh, translation um, for the different uh, process at the same time. This can help uh, reduce some overhead for that context switch. 
But unfortunately, it just has a limited bits, so it just supports a limited processor. But I think it's enough, because I want to use this to support that debug and monitor tools, to support those existing tools and utilities, because they are like the sort of second or that third that process. Uh, Unix, um, actually in the very beginning, I had this that uh, proposal. I have this same sort, but I'm not sure we, we can use that Unix Linux because Unix Linux is not supported x86. Uh, but they can run that multiple task in the single address uh, space. Mm, last year, I made uh, this presentation across uh, several that open source summits hosted by Linux Foundation. But some guys already that question if could we use the music links. So I think we, maybe it's the right uh, direction, but uh, now we enough to take this. So other something about uh, enhancement, um, like uh, I want to skip the BIOS and integrate that one small bootloader. I can use that DP, DTP to replace ACPI partially, and I use that uh, one one bus and device uh, mapping uh, because uh, you know Unix is already a custom size. We know which device and which bus. And some uh, virtualization instruction or features, basically they can help us reduce that VM exit to help us get that better performance. So um. Here are some talk about some um, some user case. NFV, we already said that uh, serverless. Serverless is our um, promise model. Most of that public provider um, already support this serverless. Basically, that means uh, you just need to write and up upload your function, but without uh, managing and provisioning your VM, your resource. Instead, that uh, public cloud provider will allocate that resource uh, on demand. But uh, basically, they use a container. I think Unix is a good complement to that serverless because you have to consider that different QoS quality of service. Maybe sometimes you have to address that security issue. The Unix can help to this, do this. And also, Unix is sort of a chain code. I mean, a chain that function. I mean, you can put a, a lot of function if they have some, uh, uh, share some resource. You can put them in the Unix. And that blockchain, you know, blockchain can help us protect that sensitive that data, but we also need to protect that blockchain itself. The blockchain that chain code uh, is carried out by the, that, uh, that Docker. So at this point, uh, I think we can use that Unix to replace that Docker. And machine learning, I think, I think this good candidate to that Unix because those existing Unix kernel doesn't support the GPU, but the Unix can just support the GPU. IoT is another story. Uh, I like that uh, because uh, um, just go back to another thing I'd like to is that real-time virtualization. Virtualization is really good for that uh, IoT because it can help address some isolation and security issue and fragmentation and that uh, consolida consolidation and that uh, mixed uh, correctability and the problem. But uh, you know the IoT device is that embedded device. Most of the time they are resource constrained. So we need that this uh, Unix is a lightweight VM. Uh, so I think this is some uh, reference to my um, presentation. And the last thing I'd like to mention here is that uh, this year that uh, ACM uh, Association of that Computing Machinery, that uh, international conference on supercomputing, will be held on that uh, on June and in Beijing, China. You know this ACM is ACS should be the one of the top academic that conference. So my have that uh, proposal about the Unicorn workshop, um, this was accepted by that ACM ICS. So if you are interested in Unicorn, I'm waiting your paper and presentation, maybe sponsors, uh, and just trying to reach out to me. Okay, this is just my presentation. Any question? Yes. What kind of use cases are you imagining for Unicorn? For instance, uh, is it server-side or or desktops, like expect people to use it on their daily machine, for instance? Are you, are you the case for the machine learning? Yeah, for, for Oh, just generally, I mean, the Unix can, Linux can support the GPU, Unix still can support the GPU. I think uh, we can put uh, Unix to that uh, machine, in the machine learning case, generally.
but um, so for instance, what I understood, each uh, process runs in its own virtualized environment, right? Yeah. So you think everything only one process, and that for instance, if you're running Firefox, you run one, there are one single unique instance. If you want to, for instance, save a file that you download it, you then for for instance, you uh, you have an application, you just talk to another application, mm -hmm. say over T-Bus or some other protocol. How do you prevent that in a unicorn? Because on a desktop, uh, your applications are not isolated. They usually talk to each other. Uh, talk each other, right? Yeah. You know, between VM and RAM, you mean? Yeah, because inter-process communication is common on a desktop OS. Your IPC, right? Yeah. But I mean, we have a application. It includes an IPC. Between different processes, applications, not uh, just I know. the same. So, um, your question means um, one process is but another VM, they have to communicate between them. Yeah. I mean, they can that uh, inter VM communication, like a shared memory between this VM. So you can share memory between VMs? Yeah, share memory between them. That's, uh, I mentioned that uh, VM function. VM function, that instruction from that uh, um, virtualization extension feature, uh, because they can use the uh, EPT table. EPT table, that means we don't need to, to have that too much VM exit. Do you expect this to require a separate, a separate port to be added to each application, or will it work out of the box when existing shared memory, SSHM open, for instance, or a file handle, file descriptor being shared between applications? Will that work as well? Uh, like a file being shared between applications? It's just shared application. A file descriptor? I do, yeah. Is that what you understand? Just an application, I mean. No, I mean, a file descriptor to be able to share data. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you all guys, all right.